I was uh, 13 when I was watching uh, Wolfgang Puck on the Home Shopping Network or whatever it was. And yeah, it was it was the most romantic scene you could ever imagine. You know, he's got his white chef's coat on and he's grilling this piece of quail over this wood burning oven. Yeah, it's like beautiful scene. And it was a it was apple glazed quail. And all I could think was, damn it, I gotta make that. And it's kind of my getaway. I get immersed for a couple of hours and I don't think about anything else. Particularly if I'm doing three, four, five things at once. You don't have time to think about anything but what's immediately in front of you. I have five dollars. This is a lot of money. You know what I can get with this? First, I get the little gum. Mm -hmm. Then I have about 19 quarters. So then I probably get um, roast peanuts in the bag. I think it's the price of meat that really started to scare people. You used to be able to buy a strip steak for five bucks. Not anymore. I produce them, and they taste good, and then I give them to you, so you can be happy with the uh, whatever it is I produce. I was, uh, I was drinking a lot then. So, uh, my father was an angry, violent man. I would even say he could be as violent and angry as he was nice. Would flip on a dime. There was no impressing that man. He was a World War II vet. Saw his best friend get shot right in front of his face. He was one of the guys on the front line who had to first go into the concentration camp. Brought him all kinds of awful pictures. I still have them somewhere. My friends eat really carefree. They eat a lot of junk food. They don't really care, you know, like sweat, Hershey's. It has like a lot of flavor and it tastes good, so they end up eating more. Cause like I think it doesn't really have any fiber in it, so they don't get filled up, so they end up buying more. If not, you get full, right? Leaf, bacon, bacon wrapped breadsticks, everything, everything you can think of. We make bacon mayonnaise for people. They liked it. backyard and offered me a large plot to garden. I didn't intend on creating a community garden, but I was so overwhelmed by all the amount of work that this garden was taking. So I called up some friends. I said, hey, you know, you want to garden on Sunday? And eventually the neighbors turned out to garden. My uh, single parent friends would drop off their kids for a few hours of yoga or errand running. We would uh, let them plant with us or harvest tomatoes. And uh, sometimes we'd even give them a hose and let them build a mud pit. Figuring, you know, some adults pay hundreds of dollars to cover themselves in mud. <laughs> well, people talk about the soul as a founding principle in which you're developed. I think food is. I mean, it's right there. That's kind of the soul of my life, I'd say. I mean, I have my own soul and found a principle and intention, but where it's enacted in the deepest way, I think, is around food. And it's interesting because at this point in life, I can't really see myself as an individual consuming. Everything's a contribution. That's why the death and the life is all a complete contribution. And like feeling it and eating it and living it is a very important thing. Ethics, food, these food ethics bring ethics into your body. And so we're really all these kind of things. Finding, testing, processing, dumpster diving, sharing, speaking, breathing.